We have been getting a lot of questions with regards to how it is being a cabin crew and flying in general. And today, we'll be answering some of those questions. Some of you have been looking for my sister, MM. By the way, she's just here. She's actually not feeling well. She's been <laughs> suffering from flu. So she's on the background and she'll be asking the questions for us. Before I begin, I'd like to highlight that everything that I'll be sharing to you today are all based on my experience. They are my own views and my own opinions and it does not in any way represent the views of Emirates. So let's get started. Is it true that Emirates don't hire Filipinos anymore? This is a question that I often get a lot and here's my take on that. I was hired by Emirates in 2008 together with a lot of Filipinos. A couple of months later, recession hit the world. That time, Emirates had to freeze its hiring or those who already got accepted weren't immediately asked to join simply because of the current situation of the economy. And then after a while, then they started hiring people again. I could remember 2010, 2011, there were still Filipinos joining. And then onwards, I observed that there weren't really a lot of Filipinos joining us anymore. And this topic has also puzzled us because for some time, we didn't really see See any Filipinos. There have been theories as to why Emirates didn't hire Filipinos at a certain time, but it has never been confirmed. There was one theory that one crew shared and she said that as a business entity, Emirates of course likes to cater variety of nationalities to the world. So there must be a balance of percentage of nationality that represents each country. And while other nationalities came and go, a lot of Filipinos really stayed. And I can confirm I flew with a lot of Filipinos who were very senior, who has been in the company for 25 years, 20 years, 15 years, years. A lot of us leaned in this theory that most probably that's why Emirates did not hire Filipinos for quite a while simply because there were just too many Filipinos in the company. However, during my last five years in Emirates, I did notice a lot of new cabin crew who were pure Filipinas, meaning they had Filipino passports and they were born and raised in the Philippines and they were working in economy. And when I had conversations with these new joiners, then I realized that actually Emirates was actually hiring Filipinos, but not externally, only internally. So meaning Emirates actually opened its vacancy to the Filipino Emirates cabin service attendants. It's not just one or two, there were a number of them. I had the chance to talk to them and as they said, yes, they were informed that Emirates was hiring internally. They submitted their application and like all of us who became cabin crew, all of them also underwent the same process. So to answer this question, the time I was still with Emirates, externally, Emirates was not hiring Filipinos but internally, every now and then, they did. I saw that Emirates also has cabin service attendants. Is this different from the usual cabin crew? Just a bit of a background for you, Emirates has two kinds of aircraft. One is the Boeing 777 and the other is the Airbus 380. The Airbus 380 is a double-decker. One thing that it is really proud of is in the first class cabin, it also has a facility called a shower spa. With this amenity, you can basically take a shower 30,000 feet above the ground. And the ones who are in charge of the shower spa are the cabin service attendants or CSAs. So those cabin crew working in the first class cabin and then the CSAs work together. And having to work with them hand in hand while I was in the first class, I could really say that these CSAs are amazing and they know our service inside and out. The difference between the CSA and us who are working in the cabin we were basically looking after the passengers, meaning we were doing a service, we were feeding the customers, and the CSAs were mainly focused on ensuring that the shower spa is managed well. And also, technically, I think the difference between the cabin crew and the CSAs are they are not required to do an annual refresher. Unlike the cabin crew, where every year you really have to go back to training college, you have to refresh yourself again with the security procedures, emergency procedures, first aid procedures, procedures and what have you. We usually had exams back then and you really have to ensure that you pass it. So that's on the cabin crew side, whereas the CSA, so lucky, they don't need 
to undergo all these. And also, having had the opportunity to fly with them, I got to find out how amazing they are. A big percentage of the CSAs come from the Philippines, and what's amazing is that a lot of them are nurses, some of them are marketing executives, some were teachers back in the Philippines, so majority of them, if not all, really held degrees and very good professions prior to joining Emirates. These CSAs, which I highly admired, I would find out that a lot of them are entrepreneurs. I flew with one who owned a bakery in Dubai. So she was flying and at the same time, she ran a bakery in Dubai. And another one who was also Bisaya like me, she put up her own cosmetic brand. And it is amazing how these girls are not just really hardworking on board, but they're also very entrepreneurial. Is there a specific degree for me to take to get accepted in Emirates? In order to be an Emirates cabin crew, their minimum requirement is for you to be a high school graduate. I flew with a good number of crew who were high school graduates, but as I spoke to a lot of Filipino crew, most if not all of them had a degree. I suppose having a degree is an advantage. As to the degree that you must take, it's not really mandatory to enroll yourself in aviation school or take a degree in tourism, for example. However, if you decide to study in an aviation school, maybe that would be an advantage for you. But what I really saw as an advantage were those applicants who had an experience in the customer service industry. Because again, what they will see is how you will potentially deal with the customers on board. Will they accept an applicant if they are already married and with kids? Definitely. That's the great thing with Emirates. The opportunity is really open to everyone. I have flown with a lot of women, and men for that matter, who were already married and had kids prior to joining Emirates. I heard that some airlines let go of their crew when they get married or have kids while they are employed. Is that the same case for Emirates cabin crew? Not at all, and I myself have experienced that. When I joined Emirates, I was single, and two years later, I got married. And then eight years later, I had my child. Emirates is totally fine with you getting married and having kids. And if I may even highlight, when Emirates hires you, they provide for you a medical insurance. When I got pregnant, all my hospital checkups were all covered by my insurance under Emirates. And when I gave birth, everything was covered by the insurance under Emirates. So pretty much, I didn't really spend a lot. And mind you, getting pregnant and giving birth in Dubai is expensive. It really helped that Emirates covered most of the hospital bills and I say most because upon checkout we realized that we owed maybe nine dirhams or I think that would be around 150 pesos we had to pay that simply because my husband and my sister drank coffee so that coffee was not covered but all in all everything was covered by Emirates can my sister and I both apply as cabin crew for Emirates and would Emirates welcome siblings working for them? Yes, yes, and yes. I have flown with a lot of cabin crew who were actually siblings. One was a senior, one was working in first class, and some were even working in the same cabin. So yes, definitely. If you have siblings and both of you qualify to become a cabin crew, both of you, please give it a go. Do you fly to a specific route only, like only Asia or Europe, for example? I get this question a lot. In Emirates, they have a rostering team, and this team is in charge of plotting your schedule. And when I say plotting your schedule, you could be anywhere around the world. As soon as you get hired and you pass the training, you will basically travel all over. However, something to note though, when Emirates hires you, Dubai becomes your base, meaning you have to live in Dubai. All the flights will originally depart from Dubai, so you could be gone for eight days for a multi-sector flight, and in the end, you will be coming back to Dubai. What benefits does an Emirates cabin crew get? A lot. A lot of benefits. And if I could just cite maybe the major ones, once Emirates hires you, wherever you are in the world, Emirates will bring you to Dubai. Emirates will provide for you an apartment. And during my time, I shared the apartment with two other cabin crew. During my time, 
it was either a two-bedroom apartment or a three-bedroom apartment. If you get married, you have the option to move out of the company accommodation and in exchange, Emirates will give you an accommodation allowance. Secondly would be free laundry of your uniform. In Emirates headquarters, there is a laundry section where you can drop your uniform and then pick it up a couple of days later. Number three would be the travel benefits. As an employee, you get one free annual ticket and you also get to enjoy privileges such as 50% discounts, 90% discount, and of course, because it's a staff ticket, you will get accepted if there are seats available. And this 50% and 90% privilege is also extended to your family. And the next one is, as you all know, Dubai is a shopping hub. UAE is also a great place for parties, concerts, food trips. And having said that, with our company ID, if we present that to certain merchants or certain stores, we would actually get discounts. Also, on top of our company ID, Emirates provides us, of course, it's not free, you have to pay for it, but at a minimal fee, provides you a face card or a flight attendant card. And there's another one called a platinum card, which you could also extend to your family. And these discount cards would basically give you an access to pretty much everything from shopping to food to tourist spots to concerts to what have you. These cards are really great help because the discounts range from 10%, 20 30 and sometimes even 50%. How much salary does an Emirates cabin crew get? I also get this question a lot. You get paid as a cabin crew in two ways. One is through your basic pay and the second one is your flying pay. The basic pay is a fixed amount depending on your position and how long you've been in that position. And the second one is the flying pay. At the end of the month, you will be able to see how many hours and minutes you have flown and Emirates will pay you accordingly. The amount of your flying pay will greatly depend on your position. So the higher you go in Emirates, then the higher your flying pay. And apart from these, you also get allowances. So every time you do a layover, meaning you stay in a different country, Emirates will also provide for you an allowance in the currency of of whichever country you are in. So say for example, you travel to Switzerland and you will be staying there for seven to six hours. So Emirates will be providing for you an allowance for that seven to six hours and in the Swiss currency. And the same way, if you go to Australia, for example, and you're staying there for one day, Emirates will provide for you an allowance good for one day and in the currency of Australia. Something to note also, Emirates sells duty-free on board and it's the cabin crew who sells those duty-free. If you are a duty-free operator in that flight and you made a sale, 10% of those sales goes to you. Last question, will Emirates be hiring soon? This pandemic has greatly affected the airline industry. Some airlines had to close and most if not all airlines had to painfully let go of its cabin crew. So for now, I don't think Emirates will be hiring. But what I believe is when things get better, when travel restrictions are better and people would start gaining the confidence to fly again, Emirates would begin hiring. Because of the pandemic, Emirates had to let go of thousands of its crew. And for sure, when things get better, Emirates will hire again. And I say that because Emirates, being one if not the biggest airline in the world, has hundreds of aircrafts. And right now, because of the pandemic, a lot of them are not being used. But I believe when things get better, those aircrafts are gonna fly up there again and Emirates would need cabin crew to be in those aircrafts to bring people from point A to point B. So if you are someone who really wants to be a cabin crew, don't give up on your dream. Take this break as an opportunity for you to gain more experiences and skills for you to use once you get accepted for the assessment. So take this time and I say hold on because when things get better, I would love to hear that you, after waiting, got accepted. So there you go. Those were the most frequently asked questions to me. Hopefully it gave you fresh insights as to how it is to fly with Emirates. If you have any questions that you also want me to clarify, please feel free to send me or my sister MM those questions. If you want to get creative, you could even send them as a video or as an audio recording. Or if you want, you could also type that. Whatever is most convenient to you. Like always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.